Buying and selling stocks is one of the oldest and simplest methods of investing, and it's become even more popular, especially over the past couple of years. Of course, popularity can come overnight, but becoming a trading expert takes more time and practice. You need to be prepared for a steep learning curve. Even so, nothing is too hard to understand when it's explained properly. That's why we're here today, to show you the ropes of trading stocks and demystify everything that can be so confusing about stock orders. Let's start with the basics. What are stocks and how can you benefit from trading them? A stock represents ownership of a fraction of a publicly traded company. To make their investment worthwhile, shareholders hope that the company will perform well, increasing the demand for its stocks and thus raising the stock's price. But first things first, to start trading stocks, you must go through a licensed brokerage and this is exactly where stock orders come into the picture. You can think of stock orders as instructions for your trading broker. You use them to let your broker know what stocks to buy or sell for you, when to do it, and at what price. There are three basic types of orders that we'll explain in this video. Market orders, limit orders, and stop orders. Let's start with the simplest option, market orders. A market order basically says, buy this stock as soon as possible, or sell this stock as soon as possible. We say as soon as possible instead of right now, because between the moment you click the buy or sell button and the moment when the trade actually executes, there's a tiny time frame within which a stock's value may change. This is the disadvantage of market orders. The price of the stock you're buying or selling may differ from what you expected. On the other hand, the benefit of using a market order is that it has the best chance of being fulfilled, since there are no restrictions regarding its price. The only condition that you demand as a trader is for the trade to happen as soon as possible. To sum it all up, market orders are used when your main concern is either obtaining a stock no matter what, or getting rid of it no matter what. And you want to do that fast. Now it's time to talk about limit orders, which give you more control over your trades. A limit order is what you use when you want to buy or sell a stock, but you don't want to pay more than a specified amount for it. The same concept applies when selling a stock using a limit order. You won't give it up for less than the amount you specify. This means that the trade won't execute until the stock reaches the limit price or better. Of course, better when trading stocks means a lower price when buying and a higher price when selling. Basically, limit orders allow you to buy low and sell high. Of course, there is a catch. This price restriction means there's no guarantee this order will be filled quickly, or at all for that matter. All in all, a limit order is your go-to option when you have a target entry or exit price and don't mind waiting for the market to move in your favour, however long that may take. The third and final type of order we'll be talking about in this video are stop orders, which are a bit more complex than the market or limit orders. Let's see how they work. The first thing that might be confusing with stop orders is that you'll also hear investors call them stop market orders or stop loss orders. This may sound complicated, but there's a good reason for each of these names. For now, just remember that we're talking about the same thing. So how does it work? A stop order is an order to buy or sell a stock once it reaches a certain price. A buy stop order is used to buy securities when they reach an activation price. A buy stop price is always above the current market price. Now, this might sound confusing, why would anyone want to buy a stock at a higher price than it's currently worth? Well, to get on board while a stock's price is trending upwards, of course. The activation price in this case is both a signal that the stock's value will continue rising and also a trigger for purchasing that very stock at the next available price. Contrary to a buy stop order, a sell stop order is used to limit potential losses when a stock's price is trending downwards. Once the stock's value falls below the current market price and reaches the activation price, it triggers the sale of this no longer desirable stock. 
You're getting out as soon as possible, before a stock falls too low. This is where the name stop loss order starts to make a bit more sense. So basically, a buy stop order is used to enter a position when a stock is trending upwards and a sell stop order is used to exit a position when a stock is trending downwards. In layman's terms, the first approach is designed to earn you money, while the second one is supposed to prevent you from losing money. Sounds pretty neat, but as always, there is a catch. Remember how we said that this type of order is sometimes also called a stop market order? And remember how market orders are set to be executed at the next available price? Yep, the next available price can differ significantly from the activation price. Put simply, stop market orders guarantee the execution, but not the price. But there is a solution if you want more control over the price you're getting or paying. It's called a stop limit order. A stop limit order is a variation of a stop order that comes with one extra layer, a limit price. In this case, we have two prices, a stop price and a limit price. After a stock reaches its stop price, it will trigger an order to be filled at the limit price or better. The only problem is that there's a possibility that after your stop price is triggered, your limit price remains unavailable. So, contrary to stop market orders, a stop limit order guarantees the price, but not the execution of the trade. There's one last variation of a stop order that we'll go over today. A trailing stop order. You'll like this one. A trailing stop order is set at a few dollars away, or a percentage away, from the market price, and it follows the stop as long as it moves favourably. It's not fixed. So, basically, when the price increases, it drags the trailing stop along with it. Once the stock price drops by the dollar amount or percentage that you define, it triggers the sale of your stock. The idea when using a trailing stop order is to lock in profits and limit losses. The greatest advantage of a trailing stop order is that it automatically moves the stop loss level for you. So you can ride the wave while the trends go in your favor and exit when they start turning the other way. Of course, there's no guarantee that the stock price won't drop suddenly, especially during periods of high trading volume. If that happens, your execution price might end up further away from the stop level you set, since trailing stop orders submit a market order when triggered. Whew, that was a lot to take in. We know that stock orders may seem complicated at first, but once you understand the difference between them, they make trading oh so much easier. The best part is they let you take direct control of your investment and maximize your chances of getting the best possible outcome. Jesse Livermore, who's considered a pioneer of day trading, once said, money is made by sitting, not trading. That's a really neat way to say that patience and understanding when to go for it and when to cut your losses is what separates investing from plain old gambling. Truth be told, a lot of us feel like trading is reserved only for the most talented or the smartest among us. In response to that, we'd like to quote another gentleman you might be familiar with. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with 160 IQ beats the guy with 130 IQ. Coming from Mr. Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors in the world, that counts for something. 